But so much of what I feel has been lost and what needs to be reclaimed is this sense of community. And then, and a part of that is, is to create, uh, to recreate, I guess, uh, communities that, that have a very sacred and right role for individuals that, um, I, I remember I, I had read some theory, and I don't know how true this is, but that, that there's a very small percentage of the human population that are schizophrenic. And that in indigenous cultures, they have very low rates of what would be mental illness, they would call mental mm-hmm. illness. And part of that is part just because the fact that they're more egalitarian, they don't um, ostracize individuals that are um, different in that regard. But but they also, they find people that may be very, what we would label as mentally ill or having some sort of um, handicap. And they see them as somebody who's able to actually do something very uh something that is absolutely necessary in their community, in their village, in their tribe. And, and so when you said that, it just triggered this, this thing inside me where I think that to me is one of the most tragic things about the modern world is that there are so many groups of people, so many individuals and women are a big part of this that have been cast aside as irrelevant and Mm. un and not useful to the program that we're supposed to follow. And so when I read your work and I, and I listen to you speak about this, I get this feeling like you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct in wanting to um, bring to light all of these subjects and all of these um, suppressed histories because I think a lot of people sense that something is wrong. And I think that a lot of the um, maybe the social unrest that we're experiencing today and, and why there has been this resurgence of interest in these subjects is because we sense that something just doesn't feel right about our modern time. People place, are in pain. Yeah. There, yeah. I mean, this opioid crisis, people are in a lot of psychic pain and, you know, uh, crack before that. And it's just like, you know, this, there are many structures of oppression in this society and, and people don't know anymore how to get out of their pain. You know, mm-hmm. so that that's something where there's a really a need for ceremonial culture and for reconstruction of community. Mm-hmm. And and what you said before, I mean, there's there's a couple things you touched on. One, this this concept of you know, actually anthropologists regarded shamans as mentally ill, mm-hmm. and they noted that some of them were epileptic, and that for them was a sign of mental illness on some level. You know. Um, this there, there there are so many lenses that this was put through, especially in the initial uh, lens that was turned on these shamanic cultures from the Western Civ viewpoint. Mm-hmm. And and I think you're right. Even beyond people who have uh, schizophrenic or whatever other uh, you know differences in perception, you know mm-hmm. there are certainly faculties there. It doesn't mean that because you have this, that you m- will become a shaman. But I think there are great many people, and not only quote-unquote mentally ill people, but uh, people who, th- who are neurologically different abled. I mean, you've got people we now label as Asperger's or autistic or things that don't even maybe have names to them, who, you know, dyslexic. Their faculties work in a different way, and it's very difficult for them in a society that's all organized according to linear principles. Dyslexic people can't do it, but Mm -hmm. they probably, I think, have other capacities which are simply denied development in the way this culture is structured. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, um, I mean, there's, there's so many angles to this. 